exciting for us because we've got um, some committed people, some passionate people who want to see things um, get done, uh, who want to look at the solutions and, and, and they're our solutions and um, move forward from there. The community needs to know that we're, we're actually there for them. We're not there for ourselves, we're there for the future of this place. And we're, that's what we're driving this this vision forward. Yes, they do vote people in to be leaders. And but then what happens is if it becomes dysfunctional or we've had so many CEOs, people, anybody, any community will, will lose face with leadership and they become despondent. I'm very passionate about what I'm doing at the moment. I, I, sort of look at the young people today, they got no direction and what's part of my job is to push them in that direction, aim them in that direction. Um, the young people today need some sort of role model like us to, to be encouraged, encouraging them. We all have to come together as one community, not individuals, it's not about, you know, power and, and um, glory for individual families or organisations. It's about the power of one community. The problems need to be identified by a community and the community needs to come up with the solutions for fixing these problems too. It is us people who live in this community. It's the community's responsibility, not the government's responsibility. They're here to listen to and support us, but at the end of the day, it is our responsibility. It's a shared vision, actually. We've got some good people now on the island that are, are driving the same vision. This is why we've come up with the concept of having drivers in our community. They become the experts. They narrow their focus so that they are focusing on a specific issue and they, they drive that. They find support, the support people that they need. For the whole project we've put in three, there's three support people. Each of the 15 will take on, um, bring someone else with them and, and they will mentor them and, and they'll learn together. So then we'll have 30 people and hopefully we can build from there. The whole planning process is going to take us a while and, and it's about looking at your vision and, and working towards that vision. I've been the Mayor of Mornington Island for the past three and a half years. Uh, this is my first term in um, local government. And I, I basically came into this, like, like a lot of our people, thinking that things, that there hasn't been a lot of changes in the way that we do business. Um, but coming through this, I've found that the, it comes at a cost to a lot of other things. To be effective in, uh, in leadership, it comes at a cost. The commitment that you have to put in um, into to doing a good job or, or a job that you feel satisfied with uh, does come at a cost. We don't have the support mechanisms in place for leaders. We're just basically throwing them into the deep end and expecting them to do a fantastic job. This is why we've 
come up with the concept of having drivers in our community. A mayor outside, you know, he'd have, he'd have uh, systems in place, mechanisms in place where, where if they want advice on something specific, can access it straight away. And this is the purpose of, of, our, um, of our drivers, is that they become the experts so that whoever's in the mayor's position, you always know in your community who's the expert and who you can um, call on for advice and provide you with that advice. And it had to be our own people in our community because they, they live and, and they breathe their, their, their passion. So I had to tap into their passion. At the May negotiation table, 2007, um, Susan got up and was brave and said that um, people that are involved in community organisations now are absolutely burnt out and, um, and they've been doing it for years. And what she wanted to do was get um, new people involved that would be drivers and support the existing people, but also um, come forward with their own plans and their own goals and, and use that as a, a plan to, to give to government and also like a, a blueprint for whoever's going to take over next that she started a process and that will be able to continue like it won't fall in a heap when she goes. And what she wants to do with these 15 drivers is that they actually lead their passion or their priority area and take that to government instead of having like just all these meetings just with everybody turning up with no plan or anything like that. So she wants government and other um, funding agencies, I suppose, to actually meet with these 15 drivers who will be doing their work all year through and, and writing down what the people want in the community and how they want it delivered in, on, on Mornington Island. Whatever happens in this community, we've got to support each other. We've got to move ahead together. We don't want any unfinished business anymore. We want to start ticking off on things. I think a lot of mayors are, who are women are taking more of a stronger role now in their communities and an understanding we have to fight together to make a change, not standing alone. To have that plan based on what the community wanted. It's not what the government wants, it's what the community wants and they're going to drive it. Um, it's just like a local partnership agreement. We. We, you know, the community put it together. Well, the major change that needs to happen is, is support. And that's one thing that I know that all the councils have spoken about, and, and only Susan, as the Mayor, has spoken about, that there's a lack of support in this community. You know, the people working together is making, you know, making this community a lot stronger. It's very important that we, we get that support, and we support each other, because if we don't get the support, how can we move forward? And with that 15 drivers that are driving this stuff now, the capacity building stuff, it's very important that we get that support from the community. It's going to make a big impact, a big statement across this whole community. If, if we're going to keep driving this and a new mayor come in, that person needs to know that this is serious business that we're playing with to move this thing forward, to make a community go forward. This is the starting point here now to carry it on. It's going to be a big drive. So hopefully we'll be all still in that same position, 15 drivers or even more. We'll have more next year, you know. But this is the starting point. The next mayor needs to sort of, yeah, it's just a capacity building, I reckon, that needs to be driving this community for changes. But unless the community, the wider community knows that, okay, these might be trying to do something for us, let's go out and push this mob along and help them, pick them up and get them to this, accomplish this goal of, you know, look at this vision that we're getting and get to it. But yeah, it's just that lack of communication that's sort of stopping us. But we're not going to let that stop us. We're going to keep moving forward. We've always believed that one of our solutions is, is returning to, to the traditional family lands. You know, we've, with Mornington, we've got, it, we've got five, five, six different uh, tribal groups. And, you know, I mean, it, even though they've been together here for some 40, 50 years, you still feel, you know, that your connection with your own homeland. So we're trying, one of the, our solutions is to try and get people back out to their homeland.
songs of our country to us is just, it's very hard to describe. That if we have ad stations going, maybe people will start coming out to their country. And you know, we had children that they, they used to sit and do gardening and sit around the campfire, to tell stories. And those things don't happen anymore. They don't happen in town. The only place they'll get it is you know, on the ad stations or at camping. That's what I really like to do. Maybe if we all get together and help each other, we'll be right. But that's the thing I like to see come back to Mornington. They know they'll go to learn to hunt and fish and feed themselves, if you know, but they don't do them things in town. Whenever I go back out, um, the feeling that you get out there is, you know, I can't describe to you. Um, it's something that's, that's inside, um, that you feel inside, and, uh, and it's almost like someone's taken the load off your shoulders there. A lot of people in our community walk around with, a lo with loads on their shoulders and just don't know how to get rid of it. Our people are very good at hiding, hiding all the, um, the pressure until it builds up until, you know, the final breakdown. Um, so it's really hard to know what, how people are feeling in some, sometimes. We need that, we need that space and I go back out there, you know, whenever I can um, because it, you, your mind becomes clear and, and all you're thinking about is, you know, oh, the, my great-grandfather, you know, this is where he walked and this is where they lived and this is how they lived and, you know, I just, you want to get back to that. Our grandfathers, they, used, they look after the country. See, they, they know one time what time to burn, what time to hunt, how to look after different you know, seasonal things they used to do. Well, this is a tradition we're trying to keep strong in our, in our community, in our culture, is the men be taking that pride in looking after their own area and looking after the country, just leading examples for future generation men that are going to be growing up. You tidy up your country, you look after it, that place is always going to be feeding you. We've set up the, the Rangers group just recently and um, because of the Wesley Islands is a large area, Mornington itself is you know, a pretty large island. Um, so hopefully with the cooperation of the Rangers and getting them all skilled up and trained, we started uh, the ghost nets program even before we found out it was actually a project that was funded. But the motivation is here, the, the keenness, the willingness. Um, the, the workers were actually chosen from um, the different clan groups on the island. We were represented by Cardo, Yanga, Lardo. So we really want to see them become a very multi-skilled, multi-functional group. Got the ones who are really, they didn't want to be in it for the money, they wanted to be in it because they wanted to make a difference. First when the Ranger project started up, I was really passionate about it because my marine life and that, uh, I love my, just looking after the wildlife and that, and you know, my hunting and that. I just want to keep that thing going for generations to come. Well, you see the other Rangers here, they, uh, first they measured it, and now they, um, they're riding in the locations, GPS, Location, yeah. 09, 113. For the love of my country and the places, it's the kids, they, they, they like us rangers because sometimes they call out to us, you know, instead of calling us rangers, they call us the power rangers and I think, oh, well, we got some sort of a power anyway, you know, power rangers, yeah. And to look after the whole of Mornington Island and the surrounding areas, my love for it for the children's sake, you know, teach them to how to look after their country too, you know, when they grow up. I'd like to see the departments, all the different departments and organisations, um, really getting behind and have the resources, have the training, even right into, you know, um, being delegated powers, special powers to enforce um, the laws to help protect our environment. And these sort of things bring us together and help us grow stronger, you know, when we're doing these sort of things, getting ghost net and also picking up other rubbish along the beach, you know, keeping our beach clean. So that's why we start working as a team and building this relationship between all the men and starting up all our 
like ranger business. That's why we started from this ranger program with all this land and sea stuff because at the same time we're talking to each other and supporting each other as we, as we go along. It's just that connection that we've got. If you, you're sitting idle too long um, and not having meaningful work, if you can't see the benefits that it's bringing to your family, um, it's, 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 it's driven men to, to drink and even suicide. If I could turn back the time, uh, and I've always probably think in the back of my mind that my son's death from suicide, you know. It'd be like if I could do some, something differently. And our people got to realise that you only have one life. And what you do with it, it's really up to the individual person themselves to be responsible for their health, you know. And, um, you know, whatever happens today, happens today. But like yesterday, to our people, it's only memories. We only hold memories of our people. And when you think about tomorrow, it may never come for our people. And our people got to understand that what you have now is what you cherish. And how you cherish your life is what you do as an individual to be responsible for your health. And not only just for your, yourself, but think about your kids, your families, your grandparents, your mothers, your fathers. It's how we provide that to them. And there's so much support structure in place, but our people need to access it. You know, the depression, uh, and I know I'm speaking firsthand. You know, you know, I went out um, through family problems, just suffering from depression. Um, myself, I at least I had the um, ability to identify that and seek help. Um, that's something else that's lacking in this community: this uh, help for men. You know, um, having a fly-in, fly-out uh, mental health worker who's on call, you know, just during certain hours is is really not good enough. We do need um, some place for men a men's refuge, you know, sanctuary sort of thing, away from depression because, uh, you know, we, we've got a very high rate of suicide, and, you know, on Mornington. I know it's a uh, across-the-board thing in Indigenous communities, but there's a reason why people are depressed. So when you identify those things and tackle the issues behind it, then we'll start getting some answers. I'd really like to see a rehab centre set up um, for men. And, and, and families, there's uh, many times people come back from rehab on the, on the mainland uh, or they come from jail where they've done a lot of it and they come back with very good intentions, come back very um, motivated into doing what's right but because there is no support here um, the, for people everything just goes down the drain, you know, all that courses that they do and all those good intentions. Let's come out for Game of Touch. It's a, um, it's a weekly thing, pretty much every Saturday and Sunday's afternoon. It's something that means something to us. You know, like each and every one of us. Because you're talking on the field, and not just on the field, but also off the field. You know, and it, it just brings fellas closer, you know. Well, it's, it's up to the person on what life they want to live. You know, and if they need someone like some people don't get the encouragement that other people do. My father, he played a big role in my life. You know, he, he encouraged me and supported me into getting a good job, you know, something like a trade or something. Football was my passion in boxing, but a trade is something that I'll always have, you know. You know, you think about a football team, and, and you if you're a player on the field, you, you just, you, you're worrying about where the ball is all the time, you're worrying about your position, you're worrying about where you should be and where you shouldn't be and so on. Um, what we need to do is to become coaches, you know, or sit up on the grandstand and have a look at what's going on, see the big picture, see where people are, um, where, where there's gaps and where people should be and so on. That's one of the strategies that we have to try and address so that our people are not continuously being the players on the field, that they are having the time out to sit back and see what's going on in the whole game. We feel really strongly about this project. It is something that we need to put on this table here today now and say, yes, we want this project to continue. It's doing a lot of good work. And we don't have the, all the employment opportunities that a lot of may, on the mainland and so that's something that we have to look at and how we're going to deal with that. But we've got some good drivers in that area and they'll, they'll find solutions. I'm one of the drivers for the um, training to employment and economics. Um, one, of the, one of the things I like to see at Moynton Island 
there's a lot of the young people here um, get their trade certificate, get their accredited tickets and that, and get, get the young people in, into real employment, real jobs, you know. In the past, they used to do training for training's sake, and it's just a government thing. You, you go out and you do training for training's sake. What we're trying to do now this, with, with the CDP manager now is um, a new strategy, sort of training to employment strategy, where actually you do training for a real job. So the CDP is just a walkthrough. You just come walk through the CDP and you just lead into another real job. And that's the main thing we're trying to focus on now. We need to develop business opportunities, whether it's for individual CDP participants um, to be able to run it on their own, or for community groups such as the CDP group to um, structure the business so that it makes employment for community members. I think there's about eight nine good business um, opportunities on Mornington Island and they are viable at the moment and that'll give us, the people of Mornington Island and the young people as they come along, real employment, real jobs that they're looking for and a sense of pride. Uh, which is going to be a big help in the future for, us, for our young local people. Identifying real jobs for them, making them move on to better employment and give them the job that they actually love to do. Can't be in a job if you don't like it. I don't see it as a struggle, it's about education. Change of mentality, the way that we actually think as Aboriginal people to government's direction and our own direction for our own sustainability within our own communities. The whole negotiation with government um, we need to work on. Um, we're improving on that. I think government finds it hard to, to come to terms with how you fit in culture, how you fit in um, our values, our beliefs into policy. I mean, how do you do that? We are governed by government policy at the end of the day and how you work that and how it works in your community is, is um, how, how you end up having to do business. Just because, you know, as we always say, not every community is the same, but the policies have to reflect all the communities. So it's a matter of how you work your community with the policies that, of the day, I guess. In the alcohol management plan, you know, they, they got all these rules and stuff. We just don't like it because it don't, it don't actually reflect on us. It, it doesn't come from, it's not from us. When they make decisions like this, they said, well, right, that community and that community is similar will impose these set of rules. So uh, ourselves and Arakoon more or less get the same treatment. Yeah, we acknowledge the alcohol management plan, you know, it's, but there's some changes that need to happen. And the changes need to come from the community. Not no government people coming and telling us what to do. We need to do it ourselves because we live in this community. I think the community really need to have a lot more feedback, but everybody seems to be targeted with the same thing. Uh, what's the rewards of people being responsible in this community, drinking responsibly? There's nothing. And I don't think it's fair. This is 2007, you know, they shouldn't segregate people, you know, like rules in black community, Aboriginal communities, what, at, compared to mainstream. And that's what, like, look at all these problems that they have at those schoolie week things with kids and rapes and drugs and that sort of thing. Do they ban schoolie week nationwide? Nothing. There's got to be better solutions. It actually encourages binge drinking. It takes away those afternoon hours you know, that you could be spending time with family at home. On a Friday, there's over 300 people up at this pub. You put that amount of people in any pub, there's bound to be some conflict there. We just need the people at the top who have the final say to actually listen to what's come from the community, what's not being imposed on us all the time. Um, people seem to work better with things that they come up with. Mornington Island is desperate for a rehab centre. Um, as I've said in uh, on other occasions, uh, people come back from, uh, you know, crimes that they, from jail and that, uh, crimes that they've committed while under the influence of alcohol, and they come back with good intentions and um, because of the lack of support here, um, they, uh, all those intentions go down the drain. Um, and I also believe that the idea of building one in Normandon, where there's three pubs, mind you, 
you know, I think they're just finding the cheapest option. Mm. I believe that each community should have a form of not one gigantic multi-million dollar complex, but a place where families can go to be together and tackle their issues and problems together and become a family unit again because that's what it's really all about, it's a breakdown in family unit. And what we do out there, up at the pub, in the community, it affects, you know, what people think of us. So people are watching us all the time and judging us on what we do. You know, there's things that I'd like to do in this community that I can't do because I have to look at myself as an individual. I have to look at who I'm working for, how I'm represented in the community, and what children look up to me as role models. It's too easy just to say, you need to stay home and look after your kids because that's not going to solve the problem. I mean, you put these parents in the house and these kids have been independent for so long that they're going to, you know, they're going to rebel against their parents. I mean, when I was 15 and 16, look, the last thing I wanted to do was hang out with my mum and dad for the night. And, and that's normal, you know, that's, that's normal behaviour for a teenage person, you know. Whereas these kids are, are independent from, you know, from 10, look, look, 10 years old. There's a lot of good young people, there's no doubt about that, um, which, is, which um, shows a lot of potential, but they need that support by us. It's hard being a young person on Wellington Island, and you need support of parents if you're going to live in a place like this, because most children don't have that, and they end up pregnant, young girls end up pregnant, and boys just do drugs, and... They need their parents back. They need that, that family stability. They need to know where in, where in Aboriginal society they sit. I mean, I'm, I'm someone's brother, I'm someone's uncle, I'm someone's double, I'm, I'm someone's grandfather, I'm their little uncle, you know. I've got, I've got people who are 16, 17 and call me brother. Look, I know this because I was raised, I was raised with, with this knowledge. I was raised by, my, by all my mothers and all, all my fathers and my uncles and everything, and they all told me these, these, these kinship lines, and they told me who my grandparents were, who, who my little brothers were, who, um, who I'd call Granny and Bubby and Jamba. You know, I, I know all that knowledge. Well, I know enough to get me by within this community. Whereas these kids, they call each other MFs and, you know, all those, all those disgusting names. And I've even been called that by kids, and I know for a fact that they're supposed to call me little brother. So by rights, I can discipline them children too. Because through law, I, I, can, I can talk to them kids the way that, that their parents do, because I have that stature over them. But they don't know me in that way, so I've got to stand back and say, well, look, you know, I'll do it the right way, and I'll go and talk to their parents. You know, it's, it's lost within this community. Those, those vital connections of family and kin is, has been lost. Now, families like, like my own and probably about six or seven other families within this community are still strong within their family groups where they, they know their levels of power and they know who to consult if there's something in the family that needs to be done. Like, that's lost to these children. You know, we've got a whole, whole generation of feral children almost because... You know, we've got kids 12, 13, walk, still walking around with no clothes on, snotty nose and everything, because there's nothing in the home for them. I mean, <clears throat> these kids need support, they need their parents, they need, they need that family unity once again. Young people need good role models and support of parents. I want to go and meet Deborah Mailman, and my dream is to become an actor and a model, and then I want to come back and and help other young people to follow their dreams. And, yeah. The future is with our children. This is their community. Um, we're not Lardal, Kaidal, Yungal, um, Mainland, you know, Wanyu, whatever. We're Mornington Island community. They've got to, they've got to see that, that we're all one. Um, yes, our history is important to, each, in, to all of us individually, but the most important thing that we need to Get our kids to remember to know is that Mornington Island is our community. We're all Mornington Islanders at the end of the day. What I'd like to see happen would be really to focus on our youth. Have a look at who we've got here now that have finished school that could be our potential, our next council, our next lead, group of leaders because they're the ones that we really need to focus on. Without those young people, you know, we need to mentor them now, train them up give them as much information and knowledge as we possibly can about how, you know, this community should be run, what sort of things, you know, really affect us. Look at local government stuff as well as, you know, community 
stuff as well. But I think, you know, this is where it all has to happen with our young people, our youth. Well, it's sort of more our school philosophy. Like we've got the, the mother who lays the eggs, which represents um, the school itself. And as the, as the eggs hatch, they have to get to the water. And that's significant to us, like getting our children, when they grow up, to be able to do something in life, you know. So, but it's a hard, it's a, it's a hard road. We've got animals around the side that represent things that could hinder their progress in their life, like the crab, the snake. So, so it more or less represents children getting down here into the water, and the water sort of represents that big wide world for them to be able to cope in that big wide world. So hopefully we get lots of turtles into that water. Just working one on one with kids is a wonderful job. Yeah, yeah, you just, you could see them progressing um, and you know what they need and what they're lacking in. So, oh, it's just a lovely job. And, you know, uh, just getting them just that little bit higher and makes my day. You could just see in their faces that it's special to them. And that's what makes me feel sort of special as well. What a capacity building came about is I think we need to get all the, all the organisation working together and with, with the youth that have, like, with all the youth stuff and school stuff and educa yeah, education, um, health and all that. We need to make this thing sort of the better for the for this future of this mob, you know. And um, with the council driving it and Susan, that yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a big change if it's, um, it's going to keep going forward. It's all about togetherness. And you know, and we have to change the attitude of those that, that want to go off on their own tangent. Talking to them, making them see the big picture stuff. Because at the moment no one can see any big picture stuff. They're only living from one day to the next. So we really need to change the attitude of our people and show them this is where we can be you know, in a few years. You're always going to have someone who's just never going to see the positive side of things. I mean, this is the kind of world that we live in. But it's our leaders that, that have to learn how to deal with a lot of those things. You can't be focused on that kind of thing all the time because if you do, you will not, you will not survive. You will, you will want to walk away. So through this whole project, we're going to be looking at all these things and you know, make sure that we've got things in place so that people can see that they are making a difference and that they are doing some good things and that we are actually moving. You know, there's so much problems in our community. I'm not saying that we're, we're you know, going leaps and bounds. Provided we have, we know our vision, provided we've got a path to that vision, provided we all know that path, and provided we all become committed, um, it doesn't matter how fast we move, as long as we're moving, and that's where um, we need to look at how do we sustain our leaders to, so that they're there for the long run. You've got to be happy with what you're doing, you've got to be satisfied with what you've achieved, and, and the community notices it, you know, if that, you're, that you are genuine about what you're doing and that you are committing, and you are, you're trying new things and you're taking up challenges. Look, we, we live in a time of change and change is just going to go on and on and on. And we need people that look, are going to say, come on, bring the change on, I'm right, right I can stand up to it, you know. Or, change doesn't worry me. We're starting off small and hopefully people will see the results and see that that we've got people there that are, are committing to this community and committing in a big way, you know, they, they're really taking the time to to learn and to experience and, and become really effective and that's what we need at the end of the day, effective leaders.